to betray, to betray Jesus. At the beginning of the feast, when the Passover lamb was crucified, the disciples of Jesus approached him and asked, Where do you wish us to prepare the Paschal meal? Jesus took two of his disciples and instructed them, Go into the city and you will see there a man carrying a water jar. He will show you a suitable place. The two did as Jesus commanded. They entered the city where they found the man in the water jar who brought them to a large upper room. When evening had come, Jesus arrived at the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you that one of you is going to betray me. The disciples were stunned with grief and began to protest one after the other. Surely not I, Jesus replied. The betrayer is the one you dip, of you dipping his hand in the dish with me. The Son of Man is filled, fulfilling scripture, but woe to that man through whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Then Judas slipped out into the night. The time came when Jesus and the disciples went to the upper room. He took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took a cup, he poured wine into it, and he blessed it. He said, this is my blood which is shed for you. And this is a new covenant in my blood that I am your Lord, you are my people. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. It means every time you take this cup, you take this bread, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. All those who follow Jesus Christ and take him as their Lord and Savior are invited to participate at home with your own communion. Let us pray. Gracious, loving Lord, I lift up these elements to you as they represent what your son did for us on the cross. We are reminded of the special gift that he gave us of the Last Supper. These elements we are thankful for and praise you for the blood shed and the body broken for our sins. Lord, be with us as we continue to hear the story of his sacrifice for us on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Then having sung a hymn, they left the city for the Mount of Olives. As they walked, Jesus said to his disciples, You will all desert me this very night. So it is written in the prophet Zechariah, Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And Peter protested, Though all desert, I will remain by you. Jesus replied, I tell you truly that this very night before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. Still Peter maintained, even though I must die with you, I will never deny you. And so declared all the disciples. Jesus halted at an olive grove called Gethsemane. Then going apart with Peter, James, and John, he left them on watch and continued a little further alone. 
There he fell on, the, on his face in anguish prayer. Soon he returned to the three to, on watch and found them sleeping. Rousing them, he asked Peter, could you not watch with me for just one hour? Watch and pray that you are not put to the test, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went apart in troubled prayer. And again, he returned to find the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. A third time, Jesus withdrew to pray. And a third time, he found the disciples sleeping. Then Jesus said, sleep on, finish your rest. Now is the time for the Son of Man to be delivered into the hands of sinner. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus had not finished speaking when, before Judas, one of his own disciples, arrived with a group of Roman soldiers and other armed men from the temple. Now the betrayer had arranged with the authorities for a sign and, and had said, the man whom I kiss is the one you want. In accord with this arrangement, Judas went directly to Jesus and cried out, greetings, master. Then he gave him the kiss. Jesus responded, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Immediately the soldiers laid hand on Jesus and held him fast. Then one of the disciples drew his sword and cut off an ear from the slave of the high priest. But Jesus said to him, sheathe your sword. All who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Do you not know that I can call upon my Father and that all will respond at once and that twelve legions of angels would come? Then turning to the mob, Jesus continued, Have you come for me against a rebel bandit with swords and clubs? Why did you not seize me in the temple where I sat teaching by day? Were you so afraid of the Jewish people that you must come for me by stealth? Nevertheless, your actions are filled, fulfilling the words of the prophet. Then all of his disciples forsook him and fled. Those who had seized Jesus brought him to Caiaphas, whom the Romans had made high priest. Peter followed at a distance as far as the courtyard. There he sat with his attendants and warmed himself by the fire. The high priest had gathered his whole council, and they began to arrange a case against Jesus, which they would pre present to Pontius Pilate, the governor. The charge was that Jesus claimed to be king of the Jews, and they brought in many false witnesses, but to no avail. Finally, two came forward and testified. We heard this man say, I will tear down this temple made with hands, and within three days build another made with hands. Not made with hands. The testimony was evidence that Jesus claimed an authority over temple affairs, which traditionally belonged only to the rulers of Israel, and in those days Israel was ruled by, from Rome. Yet even these witnesses were unable to agree on their testimony. Finally, Caiaphas stood up and examined Jesus directly. Have you no answer to these charges? demanded the high priest. Jesus remained silent, answering nothing. Then the high priest put the question of kingship in terms of the royal titles anointed in the Son of Man. Are you the anointed one, the Son of the Blessed? He probed. Jesus answered, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man seated on, the, seated on the right hand of power, coming in the clouds of heaven. The high priest turned and said, What have we of witnesses? He has condemned himself. They all concurred that Jesus was indeed worthy of death. Then those holding Jesus began to spit on him. They covered his face and striking him as they taught him and said, O oh, anointed one, prophesize, who is it that is striking you? Now Peter was warming himself in the courtyard when a small slave girl entered. She confronted Peter and said, You also were with the Jesus of the Nazarene. Peter quickly gave a denial. I do not know what you are talking about. He replied went, and went outside into the gateway. Meanwhile, the cock crowed. The slave girl followed Peter out and said to the bystanders, This 
man is one of them. Again, Peter denied knowing Jesus. After a little while, the bystanders said directly to Peter, Surely you are one of them. You speak with a Galilean accent. And Peter began to swear with an oath. I do not know this person whom you are speaking. But the cock interrupted him as it crowed for the second time. Immediately Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly. When morning arrived, all of the chief priests, along with the other Roman collaborators, bound Jesus and delivered him over to Pontius Pilate, the imperial Roman governor. When Judas saw what was happening, he knew that Jesus was doomed, and he repented. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and confessed, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. What is that to us? They responded. That is your affair. Judas threw down the 30 pieces of silver in the temple. Then he went out and hanged himself. Picking up the silver pieces, the chief priest said, It is unlawful to put this silver into the treasury, for it is blood money. Whereupon they used the money to buy the potter's field for the burial of strangers. Therefore, that field is known to this day as the field of blood. Jesus stood before the Roman governor as made their charges. We found this man perverting our nation, they said. We are forbidding us, he is forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and proclaiming himself anointed king. The governor asked, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, you say so. The chief priests were accusing him of many things. Therefore Pilate again spoke to Jesus, have you no answers to give? He asked, Look at how many accusations they are making. Jesus astonished Pilate by remaining silent. At the festival, the governor used to release a prisoner, and some were urging Pilate to do so at this time. There was a notable rebel in prison who's with those who had committed murder during their insurrection. His name was Jesus Barabbas. Therefore, the priest, chief priest arranged a demonstration to demand Barabbas. Pilate asked them, Whom do you want me to release, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus the Anointed One? The demonstrator shouted, Barabbas! Pilate responded, What shall I do then with Jesus the Anointed One? The crowd shouted, Crucify him! Pilate continued, Are you sure? Are you certain? Of, this, of his guilt, the crowd took up the chant, Crucify him! Crucify him! Again, Pilate spoke, Shall I crucify your king? We have no kings but Caesars, cried, Caesar, cried the demonstrators. Then Pilate agreed to release Jesus Barabbas. But Jesus, the anointed one, was handed over to his soldiers for scourging and crucifixion. The soldiers led Jesus away within the governor's palace. There they assembled the whole battalion. They clothed Jesus in royal purple. They set a crown of thorns upon his head and shoved a reed into his fingers for a scepter. They began to mock him by kneeling before him and claiming, claim, proclaiming him, Hail, King of the Jews! They also spat upon him and smote him on the head with a stick. Then after mocking him, they took away the purple, returned his clothes, and brought him out to be crucified. On the road, they met an African from Serene named Simon, coming in from the countryside. Him they compelled to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means skull. There they crucified him. They offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he refused it. His garments they divided among themselves, casting lots for him for them. Over his head they inscribed the charge against him, King of the Jews. Also there were two insurrectionists crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by were shaking their heads in derision and saying, So you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself. 
Come down from the cross. Likewise, the priestly collaborators mocked him as they said to one another, He saved others himself he cannot save. Let the anointed one, the king of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Even the two crucified with him reviled him. Now from midday there was darkness over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At that hour Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Ile, Ile, Lema Shabante, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders said, Look, he's calling for Elijah. One of them put a sponge full of vinegar on a stick and laid it on his lips. The other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus, having uttered a loud cry, cry, breathed his last breath. curtain of the temple. Suddenly the, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. Even the tombs of the dead were open. Now when the centurions on the watch and others who were with him saw all that was taking place, they were filled with awe and said, this man truly was God's royal son. You were there when they crucified the Lord. You were there when they crucified our Lord. Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. You were there when they crucified my Lord. Surely he was born our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet he esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our inequities. Upon him was a chastisement that made us whole. And with his stripes we were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the inequities of us all. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that led to the slaughter, and like the sheep that before the shearer is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich man in his death although he had done no violence, and there were no deceit in his mouth. May Jesus Christ, for our sake, become obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Keep you and strengthen you this night and forever. Amen.